is possible to do a slow muscle up with no false grip. Do not listen to anyone who tells you that this move is impossible, even if that person is me. Welcome to Calisthenics Through the Ages. This is a channel about body weight strength training for older people. And it's a channel that is not afraid to admit when it gets something wrong. In this video, I'm not going to demonstrate a slow muscle up with no false grip for the very simple reason that I can't do it. But I'm gonna do something that I don't think anyone has done so far. I'm going to explain how it works and why it doesn't actually violate the laws of physics. And even though I can't do it, I'm gonna give some training advice for anyone out there that wants to learn it. A few months ago, I made a video about how to do slow muscle ups. For some reason, in that video, I decided to go on a long rant about how a slow muscle up is absolutely impossible without a false grip. I said things like this. As far as I understand the laws of physics, it is impossible to do the transition of a slow muscle up without using a false grip. Oh. And like this. Now, there are people who have claimed they can do this, and I've seen at least one video of someone seeming to do a very slow muscle up without using a false grip. I believe that videos like this are faked, since they seem to violate the laws of physics. Oh. And it gets worse. That is not possible unless you have wings on your ankles. It's like saying that you could lift your body off the ground by pulling upwards on your hair. It doesn't matter how strong you are, it's not possible. Stop saying stupid things, me from the past! To make matters worse, that video is my most popular video. Why couldn't I have said that stuff in this video that only has 83 views? And I want to say thanks to a couple of commenters who took issue with this. After I got one comment that said, uh, excuse me, you're wrong, slow muscle up with no false grip is possible, it percolated around in my head for a while. Then I decided to look at some videos. After watching dozens of these videos, I was slowly forced to the inescapable conclusion that I am an idiot. I feel really bad that I accuse people of faking their videos, and part of my reason for making this video is that I want to apologize to those people. I'm sorry I said that stuff, I clearly did not know what I was talking about. And I guess I kind of got caught up in the theatrics of my little rant. And I just want to say one more thing about this and then I'll move on. Several years ago, I saw one or two videos showing slow muscle ups with no false grip. One video in particular really got me. The guy was very slowly curling his wrists forward and his head was rising at the same time. It seemed obviously impossible, so I concluded that it must have been faked. And when I made my slow muscle up video and went on my little rant, I very stupidly did not do any research I didn't even look for any videos. I just went by what I remembered from a few years ago. With that out of the way, what I'd like to do in this video is to first try to explain more clearly what my argument was, and then explain why that argument was wrong. In thinking hard about this, I came up with a key insight into how it's physically possible to do this move at all. I'm gonna do my best to explain it because I think it's really interesting, and because I think it'll be useful for anyone who wants to learn the move. And a word of warning. A lot of this video is pretty theoretical. If this diagram doesn't look interesting to you, you might want to just skip this video, or at least skip the physics sections. I'm using chapters, so you can jump ahead to the parts about training if you want to. I like to think about this kind of thing, and I'm very excited about my little insight. But I totally understand if you'd rather watch paint dry than watch this. So to start with, here's a rehash of my old argument, hopefully explained better this time. Keep in mind that this argument is wrong, See if you can spot what my error was. Here you are hanging on the bar. Now imagine that you're infinitely strong. You could hold this position or this position with equal ease. You could hold this position with one hand behind your back. And also imagine that you can only move slowly and that you can only move the left and right sides of your body at the same time, meaning that you can't crank through the transition one hand at a time like this. So remember what we're thinking about here. Given these restrictions, if you start from a dead hang with a completely straight grip like this, can you pull yourself into a support above the bar? And if so, how? Here's how I was thinking about it before. First, you pull yourself as high as you can go without adjusting your grip at all. You would reach a position like this, where your center of mass is to the right of the bar. Now you might think that at this point you could just rotate your hands forward, putting your palms above the bar and lifting yourself a little bit higher. But that's not what would happen. If you started here and rotated your wrists forward, there are two possible outcomes. One, if your grip was so tight that your hands were locked in place on the bar, then you'd get to this position. That's a nice position, arguably a lot cooler than a muscle up, but that will not help you pull yourself above the bar. 
And the other possibility is if your grip was loose enough that your hands could rotate around the bar. In that case, you'd reach this position. This is better, but it wouldn't seem to be possible to go any further. And I just want to emphasize this point because this is the fundamental difficulty. This is what convinced me that the move is impossible and that people must be faking their videos. How is it possible to hold this position? Or any position where your center of mass isn't exactly in line with the bar? Gravity pushes downward, but because your hands are attached to the bar, and because you're able to keep your arms and body rigid, gravity creates a torque on your center of mass that tends to rotate your center of mass to a point directly underneath the bar. The only reason you can hold this position is because of your tight grip. Friction between your hands and the bar is what prevents you from rotating. If you loosen your grip slightly so that you can rotate around the bar, then you will immediately rotate so that your center of mass is directly under the bar. And no matter what position you might get into, if your grip is loose enough for your hands to rotate at all, your center of mass will always rotate to a position directly under the bar. That means that if your center of mass is to the right of the bar in this diagram, the only direction your center of mass can rotate is clockwise. Getting to a position like this, where your hands have rotated counterclockwise and your center of mass is still way to the right of the bar, would seem to be impossible. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, sorry, I was just resting my eyes. Where was I? Oh yeah. Now, I think that everything I've said so far is correct. And yet, a slow muscle up with no false grip is possible. So what did I get wrong? I'm going to show you some videos of people doing it so you can see what it looks like. See if you can spot the thing that I didn't consider. Here are some videos showing people doing the move. Watch their body position carefully, and the same insight that I had might jump out at you. These first two are from Bar Science 101. Here the guy shows that it's also possible to do the move on rings. This one is from YOLO Fitness. You can see that he cheats it a bit. He jumps his hands a bit during the transition, but still impressive. And this last one is from Bar Stars. This guy does it very smoothly and with a slightly different style than the others. I'll put links to these videos in the description. As I watched these videos and many others, it suddenly jumped out at me what the problem was in my previous argument. Probably the thing that I missed is obvious to all of you. I just didn't see it because I am dumb and I needed to suffer public embarrassment and stare at videos for weeks before I was able to see it. But just in case there are a few people out there for whom this is not obvious, I'm going to explain. Okay, start from a dead hang and pull yourself as high as you can go to a position where your center of mass is directly below the bar. You can't get any higher from this position, but here's the critical insight. Duh, it's possible to change your body position and move your center of mass. For example, move your legs like this so you're in an L, and all of a sudden your center of mass is to the left of the bar. If you now stay rigid but loosen your grip, you'll rotate like this. It's interesting. The head of my little guy here rises, and his hands rotate upward on the bar, but his center of mass actually goes down. Which, if you think about it, makes sense. The rotation in this scenario was caused only by gravity, so it can only result in the center of mass going down. Anyway, that's the whole ball game. Even though what I've described so far won't get your hands on top of the bar, still, in principle, we can see that it is possible to both raise your body and to rotate your hands forward on the bar, and that's all that's necessary. Let's take a look at how the whole move could work. Keep in mind, I'm not saying that what I'm about to describe is exactly how people do it. This is a proof of principle. This is a demonstration that there is a way to accomplish the move that is allowed by the laws of physics. Okay, again, you're going to start from a dead hang and pull upward with your grip tight, but this time you're going to angle your body so that your center of mass ends up to the left of the bar. Then keep your body tight, but loosen your grip and your center of mass will rotate back underneath the bar. Then repeat this process several times, alternating between pulling up with your body at an angle, then rotating back under the bar. Each time your hands will rotate a little farther forward on the bar. Once you get as far as you can go with this method, raise your legs and pull yourself as close to the bar as you can. This will again move your center of mass to the left of the bar, and when you loosen your grip, your hands will rotate farther upward on the bar. At some point, you'll get high enough that you can also lean your head and shoulders forward and kind of roll your upper body over the bar. Notice that this also helps get your center of mass on the left side of the bar. Once your hands are high enough, you can finish by just doing a dip. Now, I've shown it as a series of discrete steps, but in practice it can be done smoothly. You can continuously adjust your position so that your center of mass is always a little bit on the left side of the bar in my diagram, 
or in front of the bar from your perspective as you're doing the move. That way the upward pulling motion can happen at the same time as the rotation of your hands. Watch some videos of people doing this move and you'll see that how they do it does bear some resemblance to my diagrams. They all position their body at an angle with their feet forward during the initial pull and they all do at least a partial L-sit during the transition. Another thing I've glossed over is that it's actually really hard to rotate your hands upward around the bar. Friction with the bar works against you. I have a really good pull-up bar, and part of the reason it's really good is that it's very rough, and so it's very grippy. I don't know if that's the main reason, but I couldn't rotate my hands at all. My diagrams show the rotations as being passive, like you would just get to the right position, loosen your grip, and just let gravity rotate you. I think it would work like that if there was no friction at all when you loosened your grip. But in real life, you have to rotate your hands forward by brute force. And I'm not saying this is the only way to do it. Exactly how you're able to do it will depend on the proportions of your body and the flexibility of your wrists, elbows, and shoulders, as well as how strong you are. But the thing I believe I've discovered, and I don't want to get myself in trouble, I could be wrong, maybe there's something I'm not thinking of. But what I think must be true and required by physics is this. In order for you to raise your body far enough to get over the bar and simultaneously rotate your hands forward on the bar, your center of mass must be on the other side of the bar. So how do you train for it? Unfortunately, I can't answer this authoritatively because I can't do the move. I can tell you that rotating your hands forward on the bar is extremely hard and seems to require a tremendous amount of forearm and wrist strength. It also requires a lot of tricep strength in a very strange position. There's a point in the transition where you're in this sort of a position and all your weight is compressing your arms closed like this while you're trying to force them open as you push upward. It's very difficult and very hard on the elbows. I hurt my elbows trying to push through this position. More on that in a minute. So I don't know the best way to train it, but needless to say, a slow muscle up with a false grip is a prerequisite. I don't think you'll be able to do it without a false grip if you can't do it with a false grip. So practicing with a false grip will help. As you can see, I can just barely do a slow muscle up with a false grip if I don't adjust my grip. So that probably explains why I'm not strong enough to do it without a false grip. This video from Bar Science 101 describes what seems to me to be a really good technique for training for a slow muscle up with no false grip. You lower from a support down to a position where your forearms are roughly parallel with the ground, then power back up. As you get stronger, you can lower yourself further and further. This should help develop the technique as well as the forearm, wrist, and tricep strength. Another obvious approach would be to work the move using progressively less false grip as you get stronger. This may be sour grapes on my part because I can't do the move, but in my humble opinion, this move is not really useful. Being able to do this would definitely give you bragging rights. No doubt you'd become one of just a handful of people who have ever managed to do a slow muscle up with no false grip. But for general showing off, this is really no better than a normal muscle up. No one but another calisthenics expert is even going to see the difference between a slow muscle up done with a false grip or with no false grip. I would also argue that the way I do a slow muscle up with a grip adjust is the most generally useful method, mainly because it's the easiest method. It's the easiest strength wise and it's the easiest on your elbows and wrists. Also, I believe that my technique will work well even on unusual surfaces like pulling yourself up onto an overhanging roof or something. I showed this in my video on the slow muscle up. Here I'm hanging onto a rafter with a big wire staple to it and with staples and little nails sticking out of it. The slow muscle up with no false grip technique would definitely not work in a situation like this. And the no false grip technique really is hard on the joints. I've only ever tried it the day I filmed myself. I attempted it twice and I tried really hard because I was filming myself. I had scary sharp pain in both elbows and pain and instability in my right elbow for the next couple of weeks. So I concluded that for me, this move is not worth the risk and I'm not gonna work on it. My advice would be, don't attempt this move if you're older or already have problems with your elbows. And if you are going to train it, I would try to find a bar that's not too grippy and don't use chalk. The more friction between your hands and the bar, the harder it's going to be. As I said earlier, there are many ways to accomplish a slow muscle up with no false grip. And I'm gonna illustrate this by showing a video from Saibov Calisthenics. Ruslan Saibov is one of the strongest calisthenics athletes out there and quite possibly the best in the world at the slow muscle up. If you aren't familiar with him, you should definitely check out his channel. He has a video called Top 5 Hardest Muscle Ups Ever. He does some truly incredible variants of the slow muscle up. One in particular really caught my interest. 
Here it is. He calls it iron wrist, no legs. He does a very slow muscle up and appears to stay behind the bar the whole time. So how does he do this? And does this disprove what I've been saying? Well, to start with, he's a beast. Probably almost no one else on the planet could do this. But physically, first of all, he starts with a grip like this. It's not a false grip, but it's also not completely straight. This is not a criticism. He never claims to not use a false grip. He's unbelievably strong and also has impressively flexible wrists. And so he's able to pull way up to here and still have his chest right against the bar without rotating his hands at all. And there's no physical reason why you couldn't do that. As long as your hands are static on the bar, then you're only limited by your strength and flexibility. Then when he's way up here with his chest practically on the bar, he pikes a little and tilts his head and shoulders forward. Presumably that gets his center of mass just a little bit onto the other side of the bar, allowing his hands to rotate to the top of the bar. It's absolutely incredible, but it doesn't violate the laws of physics. And I think it doesn't contradict what I've said in this video about slow muscle ups and how it's possible for your hands to rotate on the bar. Incidentally, much respect to anyone who can do a slow muscle up with no false grip in any form. Even the easiest version of this move is insanely difficult. Also, much respect to anyone who's made it this far into the video. Talk about getting deep in the weeds on an obscure topic. Calisthenics through the ages, the channel where no amount of detail is too much. Anyway, here's a very quick summary for the people that skipped ahead to this part. The easiest and most common way to do a slow muscle up with no false grip involves pulling yourself upward and rotating your hands upward on the bar at the same time. But the kind of motion shown in these diagrams is not physically possible because if you can only move slowly and your hands are able to rotate on the bar, your center of mass would always rotate to a position directly under the bar. In general, if you're below the bar and you want to raise your body above the bar and simultaneously rotate your hands upward on the bar, your center of mass has to be on the side of the bar that you're facing, the left side in these diagrams. As long as that's true, you can force your hands to rotate upward on the bar and raise your body at the same time. And note to self, try to avoid making blanket statements about what isn't possible based on your supposed understanding of physics. This will get you into trouble. And thanks again to the people who called me out in the comments. I will try hard to be more careful, but please continue to hold me accountable. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought in the comments. I'm hoping that this sort of thing is interesting to at least a few people. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Good luck with your training, and I'll see you in the next video.